Um, and I realised you were asking about stories and whatever, but this was just a personal story. Um, we were in, I used to come through, my bedroom was in the back bedroom and it was a converted stable that the dad had on from um, when I was born. And I used to come through to the kitchen, which was miles away, because it's all in one big walk cottage. And I'd come through to the kitchen, I'd be like, what? And my mum would be like, what? <laughs> and I'd be like, you, you shouted on me. And she's like, no I didn't. So I used to hear, I used to hear, Ruuuuh. Oh, and so they took me to the doctor to check my hearing. <laughs> Nothing wrong with my hearing. It was either like an overactive imagination, or, That's it, that's my answer. Alright, thank you. <laughs> that's great, Katie, I'm really I think, no, I think, you know, sometimes when you're young, you're, you do, you imagine your person's calling you, and that's all it was. Or, it was a ghoul. Hello. Um, I'm Mark from New Orleans. Um, oh, say that again. Uh, Mark from New Orleans. Just say, say it with a doll that you said before. Don't say it properly. New Orleans? <laughs> no, no, you had New Orleans. I like it. No. Say it again. Um, <laughs> okay, you can just ask the question. I'll let you. Um, we didn't get to see a lot of you as the Queen of Hell. So, um, what would you have done differently from Crowley and Lucifer since we didn't get to see much? Everything. Because I'm a woman with organized shit. Uh, Many men are very organized too. Um, yeah, I uh, I think Rowena observed for so long. Um, I, you know, you, you really learn by observing. I was an understudy once in a play in Los Angeles, and I felt, you know, I was upset I didn't get the part. And um, I had to watch rehearsals and watch rehearsals, and eventually I got to go and play the role, and I had all my ideas, and I stole all the best ideas of the actress who was already playing it. So I had two people's <laughs> sets of good ideas and the directors and everything else and I, I eventually took over the role and then it's one of the, my favourite parts I've ever played where I played Captain Hook, female Captain Hook. Um, but anyway, that's a whole other story. But um, I think Rowena has seen, you know, she watched, she watched Fergus. Fergus, Fergus, Fergus. People always ask him to say that. Um, if I had a dollar for every time some death would say Fergus, I'd have $33. <laughs> um, no, um, and I think, do you remember the episode um, when I was like, BE A BLOODY KING! And I was like, cut myself open to provoke a response to them. And I think, you know, she's, she's seen how tough she would have liked him to be. And unfor how unforgiving. <laughs> it's the way that only women can be sometimes. <laughs> Maybe vind vindictive too sometimes. Um, no, I think she would be very organized. I think Rowena would also understand the, you know, the toughness that you need and the shrewdness that you need. I think she also likes a good time. And the thing about hell is, it, I mean, it might, might, it might be a bit more of a fun time, depending on your personality. <laughs> it might be a bit more interesting. It's because I play Rowena. No, I think, I think she would also, you know when you, you do that thing, like abusive people do when they're nice and they're not nice, and they're nice and they're not nice, you don't know where they stand. I think she would do a lot of that. Totally. <laughs> but like, they, people would really enjoy it for a while, like they'd have this big bacchanalia feast, and a huge orgy. Or <laughs> and so they'd be like, oh, there's, there's a point to being in hell, and then she'd be like, okay, and do all these other things, and would have pulled her phone nails out. So I think that kind of, am I, is that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Come up here, picture. But I, yeah, I think it would look good, I think the decor would look good, I think, you know, there's more red outfits to come, more shouting, uh, sort of, a little bit like Brian Cox in Succession, I think, a bit like that. I think she would enjoy watching Succession, she would, she would see things in hell like, I'm turning the tanker around! <laughs> and just shout at everyone. And then, then shout quietly, which is even more scary. I mean, I, 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 could, I could probably talk about this for another hour, so I'm just going to stop. Uh, not that I spent time wondering what, what it would be like running hell. 
uh, I, I do wish that I'd had more chance to do more stuff. I think that could have been real fun, and unfortunately, you know, seasons have got to end, and COVID happens, and different different things happen. But um, if there ever was, not that there's no plans, if there ever was a movie, I would love to see what they would cook up for Rowena. And it would, there would be some pink champagne involved, chocolate, and, and some and some people rubbing. Them. <laughs> okay, let's move on from that. <laughs> Stormy, I'm from Mississippi. What's your name? Stormy. Stormy? Yes, oh, I like it. Thank you. Um, I didn't get to ask this question to the boys earlier, but I thought I'd ask you, at what point in filming the, the show did you realize like this was something that was going to be a serious event for you, like this was going to be a major part of your life, that you just really loved the cast and the fans? What point did you realize that like it was more than just another role you had to play? Before I moved it. I, um, I felt like I felt like I had all my ducks in a row, and I was so ready. And I'd gone through a lot. I had the worst year of my life in 2013 for a number of reasons, and I felt like I was this butterfly coming out of a chrysalis. And I, in w watching 14 episodes of the show and feeling like this is a real good fit for me, scale wise. You know, I saw Curtis's character, I saw Cat, and I was like, yeah, I could really, with the sides, the audition sides that I had, now do you understand why it breaks my heart to see what colossal numb no, nuts, no, what I said, but Pussy was the original word. I was like, I know, I, I, this is fun, this character's, and I had just worked on Blanche and Street Carney Desire with Lanny Moss, and I was like, I'm so ready and I'm so fired up, and I really, I, I just, it felt a little bit magical. It just felt, and I uh, I went in for the audition and the casting director was like, what, 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 you're Ruth, who was trying to find post it to stick to my thing, and the next day I'm from both Eugenie and Bob Singer and Andrew Dab and everybody in the room, and they laughed, on the pussy line, they laughed, and, and then the next day, um, casting asked me to come back. We're like, we just want you to get you to record it in a, an American accent as well, in case sometimes studios, you know, buy up and like, oh, we'll understand her. And so I went in and I recorded a, another audition in American and a kind of mixture of Scottish and American. And I just like they were they were looking after it so much. And my agent phoned me the following day and said, "You want me to go in again?" And I was like, "Sure." She's like, I'm only kidding, you got the job. <laughs> and um, I kind of, I was hoping for eight. I'd seen the Abaddon over the eight episodes and I got that she had made a big impact. And I was like, if I could do eight episodes of this show, it would change my life. And then I did one and then I got pinned for two more and then those two and I did two more. And at the 200 party, meeting everyone, and meeting, talking to some of the writers and whatnot, I just had this sense, this instinct about it. And I really always had that instinct, even to the point, three seasons or four seasons later, Bob Singer takes me into the office to tell me, can you keep a secret roof? And I'm like, sure, he's like, you're not dead. And I was like, I never thought I was! <laughs> like, I just never thought I was. And, uh, the, the first, I mean, one of the first press articles I ever read about when they, when, when they said that I was going to play the part, one of the first press articles was like, not much job security in Supernatural. And I remember being like, well, well, you know, if, if, I, if I got eight, I would be delighted. And so everything after that was a bonus. And I got my, my wish and my dream come true. And it really did feel like, we when the stars align and you're ready, you know, everything. It's lightning in a bottle, and I don't know how many times. I mean, it happens again to me once in my life or twice in my life. I'll, I'll be so lucky. Um, so I kind of always have hope. I didn't know, but I kind of always have hope. That's amazing. I just want to tell you that I love you. I love your character. Aww. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to be here, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to each and every single person in this room for being here, for being allowed to do this. Doing these has changed my life. Seen the world in so many cities in America, doing something I love and connecting with people who 
who have a shared love of something and such good people who all, like you club together for whatever crazy thing Misha's doing or the boys are doing. And we've, you know, we've done so much good together and I'm just like, thank God, thank you, thank God for all of this. Like, I'm so grateful. Thank you for your question. I was born in New York, so I don't take Oh, well, that's not so cool. She just born in New York. <laughs> I don't have the accent or anything. Um, that's awesome. Uh, but I was wondering, what is your most memorable moment in doing a supernatural convention? Early on, um, a Scottish lady, uh, we have seen several, I actually saw her in New Orleans last time um, I was here, really early on, saying to me, I came in and she was like, Welcome to the fandom. Once you're in, you can't even eat. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm sure that was by. And it turned out to be true. <laughs> and so I'll be seeing you in 30 years from now at the reunion tour. So awesome, and you're like one of my favorite characters ever. Um, and I'm freaking out, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll stop talking towards you. Um, so, first, I wanted to say um, the whole reason I was able to come is my best friend paid for everything, and she is in our hotel sick with a stomach like she got food poisoning. And it would be so amazing if you would say hi for her. Totally, of course, I would. I have an actual question too, but. <laughs> No, what's her name? Oh, Kayleen. Kayleen. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to be Let's all say hi to you. Oh, you're awesome. Is it recorded? It is recorded. Kayleen. Kayleen. <laughs> Kayleen. 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 <laughs> That's might be a long video. I'm trying to trip on my skirt as I walk up the stairs. I hold up. Everyone say hi, Kayleen. come to you and be part of the convention. <laughs> Hope you feel better soon. We're sending you lots of love and strength. And drink that pep to this moment. all just dance all the time and have fabulous gowns and spark the eyeshadow, especially men. <laughs> and eat chocolate for breakfast. I mean, I do that anyway, I don't think it does. And <laughs> drink champagne for lunch and a steak for dinner. Even if you're a vegan, that's what you have to do. You have all four vegans, I'm sorry, I'm not going to you. I wish I could eat one. Did I, I, no, I'm not going to, no, no, it's not going to, no, shh, no. This is my self-talk, no, I'm trying to say that out loud. Inside voice, outside voice. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like, I feel like I already kind of um, said what I would do different. Um, I think it'd be a real good time. Just really glamorous. I think it'd be like the, the glory days of hell. <laughs> Make hell great again. <laughs> It would be really bad, <laughs> in a really good way, if you're evil. I think that's what it would be like. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you're you amazing. so much. Bye. Don't you just love skirts for pockets? Yeah. Let me hear a hell yeah. Hell yeah! See, you get it. You get it. My favorite thing today is my pockets with my friends. I thought I should have another one. This will get me through the next after. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Margarita. I'm from Puerto Rico. Mm. Wow. Puerto Rico. I've never been. Yeah, I went to the U.S. territory. We're still suffering from the double hurricanes. And yes. tourism is bringing a lot of money back to the island. Um, so my question is, you had some gorgeous dresses and outfits in the 
uh, series, which you look stunning in. Yes, and I'd like to know if you um, permanently borrow any of the costumes. You know, I'm going, I'm going to get really upset about this because I was not towards the end of the season the way that, you know, I might have been, things would be different. Um, so I wasn't around. And Misha, this is not, not me saying this, this is Misha, but Misha gets a really good saying So I can just quote him. He was like, oh, yeah, no, the costume department were like, if you want something, you just have to steal it. Uh, but I wasn't there. And um, Warner Brothers, like, for example, the Queen of Hell costume, it was you know, very specifically made. Um, that is in the vault, the Warner Brothers. Law. Like there's certain things that they, like probably Dean's first call, you know, there's certain things that they, that they keep it, you know, for posterity or for something in, in the Warner Brothers. Um, but I, my understanding always was, I'm just, I'm just going to complain now, um, my, my understanding always was usually when a show finishes you get a chance to buy your costumes first. Especially since every single one of them was fitted to me. And like, probably not many other people with my exact measurements and height and everything else. I mean, they literally just, and, and you know, they were, I was so fortunate with my costume. And I just never got the chance. <laughs> we don't steal, we only permanently borrow. But I, I was there yeah. to, permanent, <laughs> to permanently borrow. I didn't, I didn't get to permanently borrow. And I would absolutely watch a continuation of Romina as Queen of Hell. That would be a big ass series. <laughs> I think that would be, I think that's, so if I was having my own show, I would have that, I would see, that would have to be, I would start, I mean, we know it would be in hell, being really hellish, terrible, and like, a dictator, but sort of saucy at the same time. And looking back <laughs> Yeah, and, um, and then there would be a flashback to Scotland in 1700, and you would see a young Rowena, like, learning magic for the first time. And the story would go forward from there. Did I, did I just pitch you? Pitch you as the Can I have this before you? And um, and then I'd have Warner Brothers would have to go and get the costumes back, <laughs> bring them over to my trailer. Thank you. Uh, there were so many that I love. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. It's lovely to hear from you. I love your voice. Um, hello. Hi. Um, I was just kind of curious to know if you knew any urban legends or scary stories, kind of or scary stories that you like. Or... Um, I can't really hear you. Hold on. I'm coming over. The humidity is bad for my bags, I just realized. Anybody else having that problem, Mrs. Ben? Yes. I'm sorry. Like, if anybody's taking any photographs, can you Photoshop <laughs> my bangs? See, okay. Yeah, I was just uh, asking if you knew any urban legends or scary stories, star scary stories that you would say are your favorites or... Yeah, thank you for that question. Thank you. Um, I love Sco 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 Scottish. <laughs> Scottish folklore and mythology uh, is so earthy. Um, one of my favourite pieces of folklore, we were fairies, but they're not like pretty, they're like feisty and we have kelpies who are seahorses that live towards the land, or like men, I think, with horse legs or something. There's amazing stuff, it's all to do with nature. And um, you know the song, which I actually, I think I hummed it in an episode, uh, an executioner song, I think. See, I don't remember stuff. I don't remember the name of that episode. Um, you know the song? You take the high road and I'll take the low road and I'll be in Scotland before you. Do you know the song? Yeah. For me and my true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks of the road or something like that. Um, so, You Take the High Road is Bonnie Prince Charlie saying uh, to his male soldier, young male soldier companion, who possibly was a love of his, um, you go over land, this is in France about to be killed, you take the high road, 
and the folklore, the mythology is that when you die in Scot for Scottish, your spirit goes under the ground and travels back under the ground to where you were born. And so that's what you see. You take the highway and I'll take the low road and I'll be in Scotland before you. Like my spirit, I'll be dead and there before you make it back. And I'll, be, I'll wait there in the bonnie, bonnie banks of Loch Lomond so we can be there together once more. That's it, that was my favourite. Oh, thank you, that's really cool. Isn't it? You must be so sad as well. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Isn't it really cool when you think about, like, spirit in your, it's not up here, it's like, under the air. So like, the earth is like, spirit, then earth, then air, rather than like, earth, spirit, and you know what I mean? Like, just flip it, right? You think about how that might inform you as a person, feeling like, oh, your spiritual ancestors are under your feet <laughs> as you're walking around. Especially in New Orleans, it's so spiritual here. And it's amazing. You, it's all so tapped in here, isn't it? Isn't it? It's me. Did, did nobody else get a tarot reading here? Come on. <laughs> Was it good? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Ruth. Hi. Hi. This is Ryan. This is Lisa. And speaking of tarot, we were in your tarot card room last night. So the very first card you picked for Lisa happened to be Papa Lego. And it sounded really familiar to me, and I realized why when we got back to our hotel. The night before, I bought a charm bracelet with Papa Lego on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I know that your tarot card readings are just supposed to be for fun, but they were terribly on the last day for many There were a few spooky moments. <laughs> Wasn't there? That's because I bought this in Marie Laveau's house of voodoo. I think that's where I got my bracelet, to be honest. Uh -huh. um, so when we got back, we wondered how long you went into the room, what got you there, and what keeps you there. Um, so I, I've always been tuned to the moon. That's what I always used to say. My, my nana, who um, looked after me from a very young age, she died when I was six. And I never used to want to bother her in heaven. I was just like. I never used to ask her too much, I just wanted her to get on with what she was doing in heaven, but I always felt a connection to her and I've always been a bit like that. And so my mom has a really healthy um, respect or slight nervousness about anything, like tarot and stuff, she doesn't want to meddle. So I always have that kind of slight feeling like, oh, you know, it's a little bit, you know, you don't want to disturb something, you shouldn't be disturbing kind of thing. And then I found out my grandmother, Ruby, who was the most practical woman on earth, she ran a football team for 30 years, she was the only woman in the Scottish Football Association. I found out her mum, my great-grandmother, used to read tea leaves. You know, some places read coffee, some places read your eggs. And my grandma was such a practical woman, but she was really intuitive as well. And that's when I started to understand that it's not woo-woo or crazy or something we should be meddling in, but we have to respect energy but that we are all connected, we're all part of the matrix, we're all little ants that somehow know where to be and what to do. And there's information and there is, there is a matrix there where we can be supported and loving. I, don't, I wouldn't mess around with it, I wouldn't put any bad spells on anyone, I really, because I, I believe in energy, I just wouldn't. I really wouldn't, but I think there's good stuff there and sometimes you need a little bit of guidance. Um, and so, <laughs> playing Rowena sort of gave me heart launch to go wild with that stuff and really I've gotten so much more witchy in the last six years than I ever and, and do you know what when I started playing a witch it was like yeah you're a witch and witches and everything have become so popular since I got like you know I, I was just part of that tide it is so popular now, and I think it's part of the divine feminine in a way coming through and there being space for spirituality and, and everything else. So yeah, you're yeah, it's just kinda of your fault. I'm like hotel. <laughs> hotel. Well Marina brought back magic into my life, so thank you very much. Aw, thank you so much. Thank you. How are you all doing still awake? <laughs> who who dragged the barbin last time? Just a little. Just <laughs> pointing at it. Did anybody have a stormy? What is it you have? 
Hurricane. 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 Oh, that was good when I had one of those last time. When I did my bus tour last time, we all went to the bar at 11. I don't think it was legal, like for what I was supposed to be doing with the bus tour. We may or may not partook, partaken, partook, partook, partaken. Had some. <laughs> A bloody meaty. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so I would like to know if you were able to rewrite the final episode of Supernatural, like completely from scratch, what would you do and what would Robin do? What would you do? <laughs> what would you do? What would you do? What would I do? Oh gosh. Oh no. Um, I haven't thought this far. Here, I'm just doing an item. Uh, I used to see my leg used to be a lot higher. Uh, I'm just, okay, you answer, you, you answer your own question. You tell me. Um, I would like to see Dean not be killed. That would be really cool. Um, for me personally. And I think I'd like to see some closure between me and Cass as well. And I'd like Robin to be there, of course. Glad you had that last bit. I mean, probably I would have change Sam's web. Amen. Amen. Don't tell Jack, do not tell Jack about Sam. I'll never work in Hollywood again. Um, you know, I... Um, there was a lot of discussion about the finale and when you heard some of the ideas and concepts before COVID, and there was beautiful, beautiful ideas and real purpose to what they were doing. And, I really, they were really, they were really trying to do something. Um, unfortunately, like a global pandemic happened, and certain things had to change, and you know, many more of us would have been there, and things would have been slightly different. Um, I know what they were going for, and I, a lot of what happened in the second to last episode spoke to me. And, you know, that, that, that is kind of what happens in a TV show. Often it's the second last episode, or, um, you know, when they're sort of turning into the next season. I felt that was season 11 as well, I think. I felt maybe it was. I was like, the second to last episode was kind of like the finale, and then you, you, know, you have a bit more of a story or something. Um, it's really hard to say. It's really hard to say because I know how much everybody put into it just to get it filmed at all. To actually finish it, it took so much. People stuck in the hotel rooms for four, 14 days in a row just so they could be on set for a few hours, or you know, like everyone really did their best. And so I, I can't, I know, I can I know there's so many mixed feelings about it, and I understand them. But I also, I do know what they were going for, and I think some of it worked. I think, I think the, between the last two episodes, and I do think a lot of it worked, apart from the way. So, thank you. Can I leave that question? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And obviously, you're Lena and Mel swanning around for ages. And I think one of the things that was supposed to happen, don't tell it. <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> no. One of the things that was rumoured to perhaps happen was you would see things like, for example, Rowena and Mel and what she was doing. And then finding out and seeing what, how she felt about Dean or, you know, and I think there was so much there that could have, but I can't cope with that. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, go tell anyone else about that. No, our lips are sealed. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm scared of those questions. You say the wrong thing on Twitter once about anything to do with that, and you're like condemned to hell. <laughs> the only time I came on Twitter was after the finale. Anyway. Hi. Hi. Ashley from Tennessee. Oh, I just uh, love you. It's just so cool. <laughs> you're from where Justin Timberlake is from. <laughs> do you know him? And DJ. And DJ. <laughs> you're my favorite. Um, but my question was, out of all of your episodes, was there a, uh, a spell that you did that you thought was really cool, just really stuck with you? Yay! <laughs> um, do you remember um, when I was on the ground in the Pentagon and I was like, don't take that picture of the spell. <laughs> um, I felt 
personally, what I was going through in my life at that point, that the, the words that were written, you know, like, unleash my, it was like, unleash my voice, like my natural spirit, and let me become everything I may become. It was like the Latin translation. And it's like, unleash, unleash my power here. And uh, I remember, lo I love filming so much. And again, it was Nina Corrado. And she was just, no, that was Amanda. That was Amanda. Amanda Tapping. And she is such an actor's director. I know she's I knew one of the two women who had such good experiences with them both. I've had great experiences with lots of directors in Supernatural, but um, especially that, she was just like, People don't realize that like, just a little bit of encouragement because it's a long way for actors. She's like, Are you doing this And you're like, Oh, so you do more. And directors sometimes forget to tell you that. They just tell you something's wrong. And she really encouraged me. And it was hard. Like, I was kind of holding that thing with my neck and cut my neck. And it was hard physically. I was coughing and it was dry and to get water and I can't have water. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I really loved it. I love, I love everything about it. At the end of it, you know, I, I really went for it, and, I, and I, we finished a little bit early. We, we got it all, and Amanda was like, again, it was like a, an episode where I hadn't been there maybe, and I was going to come back. And um, Amanda was like, because of Ruth, we can, we're finishing a little bit early, and the, the crew were like, whoa! And they were like, a big round of applause. Because <laughs> for those of the people who work so many hours, they're so happy, and it's one of my, one of my really most memorable and enjoy enjoyable moments on set. Everyone was so happy that I finished. <laughs> no, but, but it, it, it went so well and, then, and then it just was, I think it's the words, I think it just was so right. So yeah, I'm actually, I think all of those words, I should probably remember them and know them off my heart. And probably you'll find them before me, you'll find the copy of the tape and tell me, but yeah, I might do that because they were good words. And then they're spell, words are spells. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Very well done. Yeah. Getting ready for the boy. For Alpha. Hello. Hi. I'm Julia from New Orleans. Aww. And New Orleans. Um, we all debate about who's the greatest character and who's the strongest, but I think we all agree on who's the most fabulous. <laughs> Um, one of the things that's very rare in the supernatural, but when it happens, it's great, is when the women actually get to meet each other. Oh God, yeah. Jody and Donna, and then that great scene where evil Mary says horrible things to Jody about wanting to mother her children. But Rowena never got to hang out with Jody or Donna or Mary. Yeah. So what do you think she would have said to? We um we talk about that quite a lot. It's like. If I hadn't been for the contentious, you know, I would never have met really any of them, apart from Lisa and Mary, you know, I've fortunately got to work with. Um, Sam and I were on set at one point together in season 15, and we really tried to have a moment where we saw each other, but if, it, if, it, if the camera doesn't pick it up or doesn't get edited in, it's not there. Um, and I was always scared of Rowena. If Rowena were to ever meet Jodie, I think she'd be done for. Yeah. <laughs> I think if anybody, you know, Jodie would be the one who would somehow actually, like, make her feel bad. <laughs> and, like, change something about herself or, you know, or get her somehow. So I think as Rowena, as an actor, I was scared Rowena might meet Jodie because I didn't know how that would go. Um, I think it would have been. I think it would have been a great scene, though. And I, you know, we, Mary had this relationship with Jack, and Rowena had this. Kind of, I was like, I was anti Rowena. I wasn't his mum. Mary was one. His mum, but I was like, he's anti Rowena. And I actually think they had some parenting things in common. Um, and I think we'd have had a healthy respect for each other. I don't think they would necessarily be horrible to each other or arch with each other. I think they might have got it about each other a little bit. And I think, you know, if I, if I was still in hell, well, I am, but, you know, if I was still on screen in hell running things, I probably would have brought Abaddon back from the dead. <laughs> and then, but then she probably would have tried to chop my head off or something. Too, but it would be fun while it lasted. 
and uh, I, I did get to work. One of my favorite things was getting to work with Felicia, and again, that's one of the few times I was really nervous. I mean, you're always excited, but I was like a little bit like, oh shit, <laughs> like, I better be good, like this is Felicia. And um, she, I said to her, I had a lot of dialogue in the scene with me and Misha, me and Misha and Felicia, me and Misha and Felicia, like five or six of us in that scene overall. I had a lot of dialogue and um, I flopped it a little bit and I was never one for flopping my lines. Uh, and I said to Felicia, it's because I'm nervous because you're here. And that's when she gave me a hug. And that's when you see the picture, there's a picture of me and Felicia and Misha together and then we did the ginger snack sandwich or whatever pictures and so I was that was a like, that it was a great experience to get to work with another woman in that way. And I sometimes got to work with really terrific guest stars. Really terrific, especially some of the local Canadian actors. Awesome. Absolutely awesome actors and again a lot of the women, you know, we just click in and it was great. Every time that happened it was great. I had a great experience. I haven't had one negative experience on set working. Uh, with a woman in any way she performed, so... And who was her, who was that, what is her name, you know, phone number? Say that again? Who is she, what's her name, her phone number, this person you didn't like? I'm really sorry, I can't hear you. What sorry. is her name and phone number? Oh! The woman you didn't like and didn't like you. What woman said I said didn't like? You said you had a difficult time with one woman on the set. I said I've never had a, I've oh, never oh, had oh, one I've never had one difficult ex no I've never had one difficult experience. Oh my God, you're so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> All the best things come small packaging. <laughs> Thank you for your question. I'm glad you clarified that. Maybe they all thought I had one bad experience too. I didn't have didn't have one. Hello. Hi Ruth. I'm Monica from San Antonio, Texas. And you seem fun, so I want to ask you, screw, Mary kill, any of the characters on the show, who would Rowena screw, Mary and kill? Screw, screw, screw. Oh, of course. Everyone, all of them. Especially Jodi. Especially Jodi. Yeah. Jodi and Sam. Possibly with pass. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not fussy. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Never kill them all as well. <laughs> I would marry any of them. I think that's the right answer for Rowena. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Matilda. I'm from Texas. Hello. Um, this is my sister, Paloma. And we were wondering, what's your favorite um, outfit that we wore? And I had tons. I was like sad about earlier. I had so many that I would have stolen if I had the chance. I mean, borrowed. <laughs> um, the one that comes to mind um, is the backless red dress. It was just such a costume, costume. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Yeah, that. That's an easy answer. That's, a, that's, a, that's the quickest answer I've given all day. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How did it go? How did it go? Wow. They were awesome. I waffled a lot. They were awesome. You're quite glittery. Oh, am I? You're very glittery. Oh, shoot. I bet you saw that mask. Yes, the mask. Yeah. <laughs> it's my natural day mood. Yeah, I know. That's what I thought it was. Oh, good. That's it. I have to plug her off. I guess so, yeah. Aww. Is it Alcal's turn? You got your, your pal, Alcal. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Ruth, come on! She's a black red whore. She's a black red whore. She's a black red whore. That is so blind that I can see. Oh, 
man, it's a feel of love. Mm, yeah. All right.